what I will be doing Nacho if it's okay is I'm um, I'll be going on mute and stopping my video um, I'm observing and listening in as part of gelling together the event when it happens so I will be attending all the interviews but Maria is leading the interview asking the questions and uh, you've seen the questions it'll more or less stay the same unless some other natural flow comes up in your discussion <laughs> and sounds delicious yes exactly and um Nacho, we do need you to introduce yourself that's why we were asking you for the little I, we've got your image thank you we can pick from that from the email but if you do a natural chat of an introduction with yourself and maria and, and if you just introduce yourself is that all right Nacho? as well perfect okay bye guys good luck i'll be here in the background oh. thank you okay great so for the record i now started the recording and we're going to start our conversation about um, co-working spaces and the technology involved. And I would love by, um, to start that by asking you to introduce yourself. Perfect. Well, I'm Nacho Rodriguez. I'm the founder of Co-working and Co-living Canary Islands. Uh, it's a network of uh, co-working space and co-living spaces hosting both local and international entrepreneurs who work uh, remotely from uh, Gran Canaria in the Canary Islands. That's great. Um, so I'm Maria. Uh, I work with Edge Riders and I'm based in Stockholm and I'm actually also in a co-working space uh, here in Stockholm right now in House Believe on This. And I'm extremely curious to learn more about how you are dealing uh, with the challenges and the potentials of co-working. Um, on your seven islands. Stockholm is also like built out of a lot of islands in a way. Mm -hmm. So that's uh -huh. really, really interesting. Um, so what motivated you initially to develop this co-working sector on the Canary Islands? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, we uh, started our co-working space out of our own needs. Um, we had a, a property available and we had a project within a family business that uh, needed uh, to be relocated and, you know, starting, you know, it's sort of like it was a spin-off of a family business. And we decided to, to uh, prepare that, that, that property for ourselves. But as it was large enough uh, uh, to host other companies, other entrepreneurs, uh, we decided to, to make it available. So, uh, as uh, when we started, we, to, we didn't know too much about uh, about the whole co-working industry. It was more of a concept of a shared office, but that over time it it evolved. Uh, not, not only maintaining the, the original co-working space, but actually opening up three uh, co-living uh, uh, locations connected to the co-working space. Nice. Um, this uh, family-owned business you are referring to that was for energy, um, efficient energy solutions for hospitals and you yourself have an engineering background. So um, is it correct that you look a lot into also the um, technology aspects and solutions for your co-working spaces? Uh, well, I'm always interested in, in technology. In, in, in fact, the, the, that project that spin off the family business was IT related. It was basically, the, the idea was to implement open source uh, solutions for companies, uh, replicating what we have had done and implemented in, in our own company. Uh, so that's why I've always been somehow, you know, interested in the whole field. Uh, but then uh, also, we, I need to explain that at, at the working space, as it was not our primary business. We always uh, kept it simple uh, in, in many ways, uh, although found, found uh, over time some interesting solutions that solved some of our pains. But um, also as they are co-working location, it's fairly small. We can only host a maximum of, of 30 people uh, at, at, at once in our co-working space. We also needed to be very practical in terms of uh, particularly investing, right? To make sure that uh, our business was uh, sustainable. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, if we had more scale in, in our co-working spaces or if we had planned to open other uh, co-working locations, 
we will probably have invested also more in, in technology. But in order for the business itself to make sense, uh, we, we had to keep our investments uh, short on that side. Maybe this is a good point to ask how this co-working part is intertwined with the co-living part, which is also super interesting from an edge writer's perspective as we are looking into something similar with the Reef project. Correct. Well, again, this has been uh, totally uh, an evolution uh, just by listening to our customers. Uh, uh, when we opened the co-working space, initially we were thinking that we will attract some local freelancers, some of whom we were already actively collaborating with. And, and it happened that actually uh, we got in touch with the whole remote work movement as, as uh, freelancers and, and independent professionals from all over the world started knocking in our door and asked uh, us if, that if they could work there. And, uh, we, we weren't uh, aware of that, that that was happening five years ago already in our hometown. And that's when we first decided to fully focus on our co-working space into digital nomads and remote workers. Mm -hmm. uh, and as, as this evolved, the second problem that we encountered is that they needed flexible accommodation, mm -hmm. which basically wasn't being offered in, in our home city. And that's how uh, uh, we started our first beta test co-living uh, almost uh, three years ago. Uh, that actually uh, worked out really well. It was a great experience. And it also made our, our business uh, more interesting. Uh, our, a small co-working space, as, as you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to, to make sustainable. Uh, ours was already sustainable, but the co-living actually made the, the business even more interesting. And that's why we actually decided to invest more resources into uh, uh, the uh, opening more co-livings. And, and we kept actually the, the co-working size the same. Although I must say that all our colleagues also have a uh, workspace in-house. Uh, so our colleagues are free to work from home or actually walk over to the co-working space if they do so. Um, is there maybe one concrete example of how to live in and work in your facilities that comes to mind that you could just tell us as a story? Um, otherwise, we're going to move further into the technology. Well, actually, uh, it's interesting, but one, one of our locations, one of our co-living locations, it's a very interesting architecture. It's, it's a penthouse, a 300 square meter penthouse with seven bedrooms, a very large, almost 600 square meters of rooftop terrace over, overlooking the ocean. Uh, so the problem that we actually have at, at the roof, that's what we, we call it, is that Colivers don't ever leave the roof. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, even if we encourage them sometimes to come to the co-working space to uh, connect and, and meet with you know, the rest of the local community and, and, and other uh, co-workers from other co-living locations, they actually prefer to stay at, at the roof and work from there, enjoy the outdoors. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's hard to make them leave the house. <laughs> Um, so that means that like, you are kind of offering a very all around 24-7 um, kind of environment with even co-living, but in a certain percentage also in the co-working areas. How are you um, dealing with that with technological solutions for controlled access, for example? Well, for, for, for us, oh, um, it, it's interesting to, to mention that uh, in order for our co-working space to be sustainable again, uh, business-wise, um, our co-working space is sort of like self-managed, um, uh, meaning that um, every co-worker has 24-7 access through uh, an, an, an app that they can have on their, on their phones. Uh, we don't have a member of the team presentially there all like during even office hours. Sometimes I'm there, sometimes one of my colleagues is there, but sometimes there's, there's nobody there. So normally uh, new, new co-workers normally request uh, appointments in order to, to be shown the space and to be uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, soft landed. But even sometimes our own co-working spaces take the role of the managers and actually they are the ones if somebody comes up uh, without notice uh, and, and just knocks on our door, they, they are the ones who take care uh, of it. So 
for us, uh, in terms of technology, what I would emphasize, what has been super important and sort of like a lifesaver, is it's the access control. So to have the, the facility on with an app to be able to grant uh, or cancel access to anyone uh, in our community to access the, the working space. Also, since we are not there as, as, as uh, members all the time, uh, as, our, as managers, uh, the visualization of what's happening in the space. So we have a couple of webcams on, on each floor so that you know, we, know, make, we can make sure that you know, everything is it's, it's, it's okay, that there's no, no issues. And, and lastly, I think that the third tool that, that has been also for us a lifesaver, which we didn't have at the beginning, was obviously a tool to automate the invoicing so that mm -hmm. in order to reduce the amount of, of administrative tasks and, and time spent on that, a, a tool that can uh, generate automatically the invoices and send them and uh, make the payments easy for our, our customers. Uh, that has been also an, an important part of, uh, of the tools that we have used. Um, you mentioned just now that these apps for um, uh, all around the clock access are key to make the co-working space sustainable again. You also mentioned that it had been sustainable before. Is that difference due to COVID-19 currently and has that changed your needs and use of technology? Well, um, I, I obviously through COVID-19, uh, we first, uh, during the first period, uh, first two months, we had to close down the workspace. Um, so, uh, uh, I mean, there was just too, too much misinformation. To, to, uh, not, not, the rules were clear and our coworkers, most of our, most of our coworkers have uh, the ability to work remotely, so they don't they don't need to go to the workspace. They go to the workspace because they like the atmosphere and, and the resources that we make available, but they can always uh, work from home. So uh, as most of them decided to stay home, we also decided that it didn't make sense to, to have uh, the, the workspace available. And, and we have just recently, uh, two weeks ago, uh, make it, made it uh, available again to, to current coworkers and since last week to, to new coworkers. Um, so therefore, technology has not helped uh, much more than before uh, during the period because most of the time it was it was closed, right? Uh, yeah. So that that has been uh, the the case for us, um, and we will have to see because we are still evaluating, you know, the different measures that uh, need to be implemented. Obviously, still uh, are uh, under you know very small rate of usage in, in terms of occupancy. In, in, in the co-working space. So we'll have to see how things evolve and uh, we'll have to analyze if, we, if there's anything else that we should uh, implement uh, in, in order to comply with the new regulations and the new situation. Um, do you already have any plans about what you want to implement or can you describe a little bit how you are researching or asking um, your, your community members? to find out the best way of dealing with this? Well, uh, obviously, I mean, the, the first measures that we have implemented uh, are, are not connected to technology. So basically what we did in this space was to, we canceled the hot desks. So we separated the hot desk and made only permanent desks available so that every coworker only gets to use their desk uh, and, and there's no, um, uh, you know, uh, sharing uh, of, of, of desks. Also implemented uh, regulations to make sure that uh, the minimum distance was respected within within the space. Uh, in obviously made available all kinds of products for, you know, disinfection of hands. We have a face mask available in the workspace if anyone wants to uh, pick one up because they missed their, their own. Uh, obviously increased the cleaning. So all of those measures are not really yet connected to, to technology. And, and again, we are still evaluating, you know, how the situation evolves and mm. to see, uh, you know, what the new normal is going to be, mm. it's going to be like. Uh, 
Um, in how far do you think that um, your challenges and solutions are unique to your specific location in the Canaries? And in how far do you think that that's actually something that is um, like standard or normal all across co-working spaces? Because it's an inherently international crowd potent, probably. Mm -hmm. Well, uh... I don't think that we are any special. We are, we are just uh, you know really focused on on the value proposition that our, our city and our destination offers. Uh, and, and again, we are very focused on on hosting uh, remote workers uh, and therefore trying to to solve all their their pains in order to make sure that we can facilitate as much. Their soft landing in the city uh, to maintain their productivity as much as possible and also allow them to engage with an interesting like-minded community of, of professionals so that uh, they also feel like home while they are uh, you know working remotely from from Gran Canaria uh, and in, in terms of, of technology uh, I mean I, I know that you know many other co-workers have, have seen a lot of very, very interesting tools uh, that, that could be interesting if we had a larger scale. Uh, so if we had larger working or if we provided more services. Uh, so far in, in the short term, we are uh, thinking about uh, just implementing uh, tools connected to sales and marketing. So we're looking into implementing the CRM uh, and we're also looking into the tools to automate our our, our bookings a uh, step uh, further so to make them uh, available online. Um, and also we're looking to improve the access control in the colleagues as uh, the, the current doors that we have at the colleagues are mechanical, they are not electrical. And it's, it's a bit tricky to, to automate uh, access with those and make sure that it doesn't become a recurrent problem in terms of uh, maintenance. So. Those are uh, the things that we are uh, looking into at the moment. Great. Um, do you currently also feel like an increased need for video conference facilities? Or is that the same as before? I think it's the same as before. What I see mo more demand is to have private offices. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think because of the current situation, a lot of businesses that have decided to leave their office space uh, want to replicate, you know, what they had uh, in their office in a working or in a flexible space. Therefore, uh, request uh, you know private areas uh, so that they can you know bring in their teams and and have some sort of like their own office uh, space. Uh, and also because of of obviously uh, security reasons and health reasons, right, uh, connected to to, to COVID. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, I uh, uh, haven't seen much, much change. And I, but I, I do think that uh, this situation would certainly increase the demand of, of flexible space in the near future. How um, does that influence the, the whole ecosystem with more of these private team rooms? And is that something that you are happy to go into the direction or that you rather want to discourage for like the balance of the atmosphere in your co-working space? Well, I, I, I'm happy with both. I think that the, the, the different customers need, have different needs and, and, and not everybody is it's, it's looking forward to a, 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 an open floor plan. Uh, um, so Unfortunately, we don't have a space that it's large enough you know, to be able to provide that, 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 that service because of the uh, architecture of our space that is divided in, in, in three floors. Um, but eventually, I, I think that co-working operators need to listen to the market and, and if the market is it's requiring, requesting a private office space, I think that's totally fine and, and they should uh, provide it. Okay, great. Um, I also read that you are very involved in trying to facilitate collaboration between different co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. And I would be interested to hear how um, that is um, working in the current crisis and what your experience with that is. Yeah, that's a, a very good question because in fact, we created the Association of Co-working Spaces of the Canary Islands 
almost uh, four years ago. Um, the idea was to uh, somehow, on, on one side, to defend the interest of the private sector in, in, in co-working. Uh, it, it's, it's very common in, in many cities, in many regions in Europe, that there is a lot of public uh, co-working spaces financed by the public sector. Uh, sometimes with uh, you know conditions that that compete uh, against the, the private sector, and that was one of our, our first, goal, first goals. So to 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 gather together in order to make sure that the, that the public sector was aligned and that they were doing fair competition with the private sector. Um, but also, uh, it, it was an interesting way to to connect, exchange, uh, you know, find different synergies between the different spaces that were spread out uh, throughout the, the seven islands. Um, interestingly enough, uh, as this is a nonprofit organization, you know, uh, that, that, that we try to put in uh, some of our spare time that we don't have, uh, uh, for a moment, for, for almost a year or so, uh, it, it somehow died out. It wasn't very, very active. And because of COVID, it, it got reactivated. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because actually uh, there are a lot of new operator, operators in, in the Canary Islands right now. We have about 70 uh, spaces in total spread out through, through different islands. And, and the reception of uh, the interest around the association was, was really high as everybody understood that, that this was a very important time to to stick together, to exchange, you know, information and, and try to create uh, positive uh, synergies uh, together. And, and that's uh, what we've been up to in the last weeks. Okay, that's very, that's very interesting. Um, what are currently like the biggest potentials and challenges that you are looking at when you're looking at into the future? Um, and maybe as an example, like, do you see, for example, specific technology, technological um, challenges coming with more of these private office spaces? Well, uh, w one of the thoughts that I could share uh, connected to technology uh, is the fact that um, I, I believe that uh, 5G, uh, so uh, wireless connectivity, uh, will certainly uh, change uh, some of the needs for co-working spaces. Um, up till now, often uh, we were a solution for for remote workers that couldn't have, uh, couldn't find, you know, good connectivity anywhere else. And I think that 5G could actually, you know, make, make that happen. In fact, will also probably um, allow people to work even from areas that it was impossible to, to work uh, at the moment, like rural environments, et cetera. And with, you know, very, very good, you know, capacities and capabilities as if you were, connected, you know, in, in an office space. So I, I think that's both going to bring challenges, but also opportunities uh, uh, to, to the flexible space. So I would see that also connected to COVID, you know, more and more uh, new office spaces being started in, in rural areas where people decide to move to, but they also want to go to a space where they can gather with other workers in, in their, their, uh, their regions. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that that's my, my, my two cents, uh, regarding, uh, uh, the, 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 the challenges related to, to technology. How important do you think are the social and community aspects of such co-working facilities? Well, I think that they are the most important part. Uh, uh I mean, the, the main reason, at least for us, why, why uh, customers join our co-working space is because they want a work environment. Work environment is also connected to community because if you don't have more people, you don't have a work environment, you just have an empty office. Uh, but, but also to interact uh, and to generate positive synergies with, with other uh, co-workers. So, um, and I see that this is even going to become more important, uh, particularly because of COVID. Uh, I, I think that more and more communities are going to have to suffer 
from loneliness, uh, and, and they are going to need that, that, that community uh, aspect. Uh, so they're going to look for it, and, and they're going to be part of the community. And I think that uh, flexible and, and co-working spaces have, have a, a lot to say, and, and, and for them, it definitely should be a priority to not just provide a service, but also care a lot about the community. How, um, what is your solution to these challenges? How are you tackling that? Uh, to, to the challenges in regarding, you mean COVID or, or what, what? Yeah, and uh, regarding uh, the development of um, co working spaces going further into the future now in post COVID, but also with 5G, with. Um, potential changes in social structure where you see this leading and what are your solutions for how you think I think this is the right way to go about this or how mm -hmm. I am going to be going about this well uh, certainly we are we are uh, watching you know how things uh, evolve and, and trying to, to understand you know the, the, the new trends but uh, I for example one of the things that we are looking forward to is to to open uh, new co-living locations uh, and co-working locations in, in rural areas within the Canary Islands. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, uh, that that will provide a very good experience for, for those who visit us. We've been mostly focused in, in an urban area here in Las Palmas de, de, de Gran Canaria. Uh, but uh, right now, because of all of this, uh, because I, we see that this is a trend and, and, and more and more people are asking for it, um, We're also looking forward to develop our network into those areas where uh, remote workers are wanting to be. When you're talking about like this more rural areas, um, um, is a co-living aspect also um, a strong part of that then again? Yes, certainly. I think that uh, it, it depends on, 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 on the specific areas, but uh, Rural co-living always, uh, you know, they, they, are, they already exist in, in many places, and I think that they have a, they play a, a very important role, and they, they add a lot of uh, value. But on, on certain regions where there is already a community of, 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 of remote workers that don't want to work at home the whole time, but they prefer to go somewhere close in, in their rural area where they can you know, be with other remote workers. Mm -hmm. I think that also there, uh, uh, there are going to be co-working spaces offering service, services. Okay, that's great. Um, that's, uh, do you like have some um, last words of um, what like, are your wishes for what would happen next or like a specific story uh, maybe that happened in uh, those tumultuous last three months or such that you think uh, you would like to share um, that represents some of those shifts or some of those things that are becoming very important? Well, I, I, again, I am very, very positive about the, the future of flexible workspaces because um, Uh, of the connection with uh, remote work, uh, basically. I mean, we see more and more companies worldwide uh, becoming remote friendly or even remote first. And all that workforce is, is going to look to relocate uh, or to stop going to the office and probably start using the closest working space if they don't want to work at home. So uh, this, this whole transition that we've I lived through over the last uh, three months uh, where we have seen remote work evolve five or ten years in, in three months time. Uh, I think it's certainly gonna uh, um, make a, a positive impact on, on the flexible workspace and, and there's going to be a lot of new opportunities for, uh, for operators. Great, that's wonderfully optimistic mm -hmm. after stormy months of crisis thank you very very much all right um great um then Irina, do you have any more questions that you want to bring up i'm just gonna pop in hi hello 
Nacho, that was wonderful. Really I'm good, back. really interesting. Do you know what you said that I'm, I, I made notes, <laughs> by the way? I was tip-tapping. You know what was really interesting? I want to pick up on what, two points. One of the things you said was, because, Marie, I have been in Nacho's spaces, so I've been to the amazing roof that I didn't want to leave ever. <laughs> Nacho, you said when you put in, I just picked joining a, a few things. You said when you put in the access technology, right into some that sometimes the longer the the people who are longer in the spaces become hosts a little bit because they let in people mm -hmm. and you're not trying to so maria the point there and and i just want to highlight it a little bit is i know from speaking to other in the sector there might be nervousness about cost about losing that personal touch we're putting in uh, access technology, but you actually highlight a story there, Nacho, where kind of the opposite happened because you took away that artificial host. Some of the more stronger community members came forward and became the hosts. I really liked that. And they Do you love it. Say and, and, and they, 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 the funny thing is that they love doing it. Uh, and, and actually, we don't only implement the same strategy in the working space, but also in the living spaces. At the, at the end, our, our way of, of thinking about this is that, okay, we implement the infrastructure, we implement you know, the, the site services, but we empower our colleagues and our workers to take ownership of, mm -hmm. of, of the space as if they were part of it. And that not only solves us a lot of problems and makes us work less, but it makes them be part of it and feel part of it. And, and it, it works really well. It's very uh, interesting. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. I actually <laughs> would like to ask if it is ever, oh, one second, sorry. Um, because, okay. Um, uh, because um, here at Bliwande, we are recently discussing if we want to implement a system where uh, members would be godparents to new arrivals, like basically having believe on the bodies. But in what you are describing there, it's more like you are relying on them being there coincidentally and taking on that role. Um, have you had any experience with trying out to like assign your co-working like, contact you, friend? Yeah. Well, this is super, super easy because uh, uh, you there's always one that is more social, that it's you know, more looking forward to meet other people, that actually takes this role naturally. And it's a, our responsibility as managers to detect you know, who are those, uh, those people that, uh, that don't mind and actually enjoy doing this. And, and just you know, engage in a formal, informal conversation with them and be like, hey, would you mind doing this if, if there was the case? And, and, and normally the answer is always yes. Just to comment, because I know in the impact hubs that are going to here, Nacho, you probably know that they actually employ, well, employ, they have hosts. Have you ha have you heard of that in some of the other co-working where they bring on people that take these roles as community hosts? And I think they pay them free membership. But again, I'm just joining because that's more contrived, we would say in English, whereas yours is more organic. Mm. So I, I really, I really like the idea. So that was one point I wanted to pick up, which I really liked. Yeah, I think if it's organic, if it is, it's better because it doesn't have to be always the same person. Other ones, otherwise it becomes a job, right? Imagine yeah. that that particular person is busy at that time on a video call. She, you know, she, if she feels that she has to leave the video call to attend mm. that person, then it doesn't work. And if there's someone else around and knows the dynamic, uh, and has and, and funny enough, normally, particularly when the new ones see another coworker that they know that he's not part of the team, he's not, it's just another mm. worker doing it. Then they're like, "Fuck, oh, this is cool. I want to do it too." You know, so yeah, they get, yeah, yeah. They get in, in the loop, and, and, and it, it works really well. But it, again, I think it has to be natural. Obviously, there's some thought uh, to it, but uh, the more natural, the better it works. Okay, good. So I just wanted to highlight that because that could be some a reason why some other co-working would resist that type of technology. So it's another way of thinking of it, that it can encourage that. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing you said, which I just wanted to mention because I think it's really interesting, was the private 
rooms, Nacho, the private spaces. So <laughs> I am I'm going through that situation at the moment. And I wanted to add through to your and this can either be for the project or just in general, that I'm assessing co-working for my personal needs at the moment as someone who delivers regularly live sessions right and high you know sessions like this that are being recorded etc and I cannot be in a really open space with noise and even in the three centers I've looked here there is nowhere that I can other than hiring a completely separate office where I can have regular access to a comfortable type of booth or room so in the three spaces I've looked at here and I thought originally, my husband said, you're just really unusual because you deliver lots of lives. But I actually think the market is changing. Nacho, would you agree? I think there's people who need to have a slightly better meeting type facilities. And Maria asked about that video conferencing. What do you think, Nacho, on that? I, I think that there is certainly, now that I think of it a bit more, uh, there is certainly a challenge around this because one of the things that I've seen being uh, questioned are actually the phone booths. With COVID, nobody wants to go inside a, co a, a phone booth. They, they feel that you know everywhere you touch, you're going to be infected. Uh, so if, if video conferencing rooms are needed, they actually need, are needed and they need to be larger. <laughs> so that, that's a huge challenge for, for, for a working space uh, because they have to allocate a lot of space that is not going to be uh, used the whole time, just temporarily, uh, for for this. And if there are several people wanting to have a video call at the same time, then it's, it's, a, it's a big issue. So, um, yeah, it's mm -hmm. there's no easy solution for it. But uh, yeah, we'll have mm -hmm. to see how, how things evolve. And mm -hmm. eventually, as, as I've discussed with other um, uh, co-working uh, managers, um, I think that we're going to see two two phases for now. On. We, we're going to see the pre-vaccine phase, which is the most difficult one, and we're going to see the post-vaccine uh, stage, which we never know when, when that's going to be. But uh, eventually, that, that that things are going to go back to a new normal that is similar to the old uh, <laughs> normal. Oh, normal. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll probably have to see you know what happens in. in both and that's why in, in other hands we've been taking cautious measures in terms of we haven't invested in I don't know a lot of uh, separations and all kinds of compliments that people are trying to sell now for the co-working space because we don't really know how long the situation mm -hmm. is going to take and also um, we just thinking out uh, you know with a little bit of common sense we know that everyone walking in, in the working space is taking a risk unless they wear one of those uh, dry suits i mean they're going to take a risk no matter what you do so it doesn't make sense for a working space manager to invest on on daily cleaning uh you know or, or twice a day or every hour or i don't know how many uh, uh, different uh cleaning uh, ratios I've, I've read about or all kinds of different tools uh, are, are, I mean, those investments might go to the trash after the vaccine is, is, is back. Uh, so we, we as operators, and particularly those who run small spaces like mine that you know, are hard to make uh, profitable or even sustainable, need to really uh, be cautious about it because otherwise we, if we are already losing money because our spaces are empty. If, if we invest a lot of money that is going to the trash, that's even worse. Hmm. Cautious. Cautious is the message. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Everything changing a lot. Yeah. Nacho, that's been really good. Maria, have you anything else that you'd like to mm. maybe just on the on the note of those those conferencing setups, we actually had that discussion here also yesterday. And I think something that I recognize happening also a lot currently is that you maybe have a group of three or four people here in the co-working space or working maybe even together on a project. And then they have colleagues calling in from Zoom, multiple ones, who are not coming to the co-working spaces or the office because they are risk group or something. And that is a, a different challenge on how to have like a video conference because it works if everybody is on Zoom, 
or it works is everybody's in the room. So right now it's a bit of a technical challenge to have a setup where you have a group of people in a room and then multiple people joining in via con uh, video conference. So um, thinking of like, yeah, we are thinking about a way of making that work uh, better maybe. Well, the best, the best way, I think that it's put everyone on Zoom. <laughs> remote, it's called remote first in the yeah. training world. Mm. Yeah. Put everyone on Zoom so everybody is in the same circumstances mm. and, and yeah. then provide uh, whatever additional tools are needed to brainstorm or do, you know, whatever uh, at each point in time and then uh, problem solve. Mm. True. Yeah. And then, yeah, coming back to, yeah now working with with what is there and seeing how stuff develops yeah As exactly everything will change exactly. a lot in the next few months yeah i mean just just look back and think how many changes and and, and, and new regulations have we had over the last three months mm -hmm. if we had implemented or done things for each of them i mean mm -hmm. we'd be first crazy and second <laughs> we you know had spent a lot of money so I, I mean, for, for a lot of businesses and for, uh, not only for working spaces, it, had, it, was, it made more sense just to close and, and wait until, you know, there is some sort of like new reality that they can understand and, and know what the new rules are. But in the meantime, it's been just too crazy and too risky to do anything. So it's, it's better to, to play uh, like uh, a turtle, right? Instead yeah. <laughs> or a snail. <laughs> All right. A snail, a snail is better because they've got their co-working house on their back, Nacho. Exactly. Play, play snail. Exactly. <laughs> They're co-living. Exactly. Right. Thank you so much, Nacho. You're our first you of our much. round of interviews, so I pick right. my favorite. I pick my favorite first, Nacho. So that was really yeah. good. Um, so just to let you know, there'll be a transcription. Uh, it's going to be professionally transcribed. I've also made some notes because we might have an angle of a blog post or something before the event as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll be in touch, in, in touch, Nacho, when they're ready. Is that okay? Those just Perfect. different bits and pieces. Perfecto. I, il, il, the last thing is the provisional date at the end of June, because of the amount of interest we're getting, has actually changed. <laughs> So it's gone into July. So I'm just going to check and see why I've got you on, that you're available on the 20, uh, 21st of July. Are you in holidays by any chance? In 21st of July. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Muy bien. Buenas. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Nacho. I'll be sending some updates as well on email. Um, adios, muchas gracias. Thank you, Maria. Thank ciao. you very much. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Okay.